Borda, welcome back to the Sim Channel. I am again playing Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Um, it's been a while since I've actually recorded this, it's actually been a while since I've uploaded as well, I'm still I think on the third episode or something like that. So, as of this video being recorded, I still have only two videos uploaded, but uh, I am in the process of getting these edited and stuff, so just bear with me. <laughs> just in the process there. Anyway, so I gotta carry on with Professor Layton and the Curious Village anyway, so let's continue. And we're on Northern Hill. Okay. Okay, our story so far. Having finally returned to Reinhold Manor with Claudia in tow, Layton and Luke are horrified to discover that a murder has taken place there during their absence. Waiting for Luke and Layton at the manor is Police Detective Inspector Chelby. Upon receiving a report of a murder, he has raced to St. Mystery to conduct an investigation. He has his suspicions that about Luke and Layton. Shortly after the murder, a servant to the Reinhold family named Ray Ramon goes missing. At Lady Dali's request, Luke and the Professor set out to gather information on his whereabouts. Okay. So yeah, again, noise glitches because of the emulator it is, so nothing I can really uh, sort out. But let's talk to this guy. Don't ever talk to this guy in the last episode, haven't you watched the last episode? Nope, can't say I know the pati particulars of the subject. Seems to be that the only folks vanishing were the ones complaining of feeling sick or tired. I'm sorry, I, I don't really uh, remember much about it. You probably have better luck talking with Zapon about stuff like this. He is and I know about pretty much everything. Yeah, I think I said in one of the videos I'll do like voices for the characters. I'll try again to do that. <laughs> right. Hello, Mustache Man. Let me in here, would you? I'd like your expert opinion. I'd like your expert opinion on this puzzle. I would take a better minute. It would take better minute. Father's age. Okay. I guess we need to find out what father's age is. Right. A father and son are chatting when the son poses this question. Dad, I'm 22 now, but just how old are you? Father replies, "You want to know how old I am, eh?" Um, well, I tell you what, I'm as old as your age plus half of my age. How old is the father? So, we have 22. Now, what ways can we figure out what from 22? We are 25 and get to 47, so he's not 50. He's probably older than 50, though. So... 52 would be 26. That's not right, either. How about we go for... 60? No, that doesn't work out, either. It's a great way of doing this. Um, his age plus half of his age. Eh? Huh. Would it be in his forties? Because if he's 40 exactly. If we add 22 to this, you get 42. So he's probably in his 40s because if he was 50, then we get to 47. So he's between 40 and 50. We figured that out. So he has to be somewhere between 40 and 50. Right? So. It's quite tricky this one, isn't it? Uh. If we gave him 42, but he had 21 to this, we get 23. So if you have 44, then 22, yeah, so he's 44, isn't it? 
Yeah, so we figured it out, it's 44. Yep, that's the correct answer. Hey! <laughs> Another puzzle solved. Another puzzle solved indeed, Professor Layton. Yep. Half of his age plus 22 is his age, so 2 times 22 is 44. Ah, uh, yeah, you do it like that, but you can't just do it like that. <laughs> just times everything by 2. Yeah, well, I did it a different way. But there we go. Everyone does it a different way. That's right, half of the father's age plus the son's age should give you the answer, which means that the half of the father's age must be equal to the son's age. The son is 22, so the father must be 44. Mm hmm. I guess I was on the right track all along. Thanks for the help, boys. Sorry for taking up so much of your time. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Good day. You got a strange gizmo. And the puzzle. Okay. So, which way can we go now? Where is the pawn anyway? Ah, oh, this guy. Okay, so the mysterious disappearance is around the village, are you? Well, let me give you my take on the situation. Well, um, hmm. Is something the matter? Ah, yes, now I remember. If it's rumors you're after, take a tip from a fellow detective and go ask Cruton. He owns a village restaurant. Right. So we need to go talk to Cruton now. Not very helpful people, are they? <laughs> uh Oh. Deck. You're looking for the restaurant now. It's not far, just head over to the west of here. But before you run off again, I've got a tip for you. If you want to experience all that the mystery, same mystery has to offer, you can't just run from point A to point B. Take some time and explore the village from top to bottom. You'll be glad you did. Much appreciated. We'll be sure to give that a try. Come, Luke. We have work to do. Okay, so... We go west here. Whoa! Ah! What the heck was that sound? Oh, Jump scares! Ah, you have just... I have just had it. Would someone please stop that awful racket? What's the matter, sir? Whoa, who, who are you calling sir? I'm a young man. Ah, but never mind, I'm furious. <laughs> that sound, that horrible noise, I can't get a wink of sleep at night. It used to be the tower only made a noise every once in a while, but now it seems to be roaring non-stop. It's been roaring non-stop. How am I supposed to sleep? You hear me? How am I supposed to sleep? Please calm yourself, sir. Do you have any idea what the source of the deafening din is? You know, now that you mention it, I don't have the slightest clue about that. I've heard it's roar of a huge monster that lives up in the tower, but who knows? So the noise is coming from the tower, is it? Well, we need to talk to Cruton anyway. But I don't know who is Cruton. Is it this guy? No, this guy's Nick. So I hear you two are into puzzles. I can tell it's obvious from the way you're ogling these coins. You can smell it, can't you? Well, you're right. There's a puzzle in these coins. Have a look. <laughs> I'll try and give them voices, but, uh, but just, uh, not be able to. Depends. Right. In the drawing below, ten coins are arranged from an equal... Oh, they're arranged to form an equilateral triangle. The triangle is pointing up right now, but you can get it to point down by moving three of the coins. Move coins around by sliding them with your stylus when you're satisfied with their position, tap the submit button. No. 
It's one of these corners you have to get it on, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so moving three coins to make it pointing down. Right. Uh... We got it. Hey. Thinking is the key to success. Yep. Yeah, just the three and the guys. That's right. The interesting thing about this puzzle is the way the whole triangle changes shape with a simple shifting of a few coins. The trick is to think about the corners on the first triangle, then it's easy to see the changes you need to make. Yeah, that's uh, quite a simple puzzle if you think about it. Yep, it's just as I thought. You guys have a bunch of puzzle themes. Stage because we're Same as it is full of puzzle lovers like you two, but not all of them are nice like me. Watch your back. Yeah. But who's this guy? Crouton, hey, Ramon? He hasn't been around today. Ugh. It looks like we've hit it. It looks like we've hit another dead end. Too bad you couldn't find him. He usually sneaks out to work to come here to gossip and drink coffee. And you know, speaking of gossip, I hear some weird rumours from my customers lately. Recently there's been a talk of some strange old man running around to say mystery kidnapping people. A kidnapper? Who is this old man? I uh, I hear he's a second hand. Do you, do you get... Oh. I hear all this second hand, so you've got me there. You need to find a better source of... For village gossip, gossip. You might want to try the cafe. Usually, you'll hear rumors straight from the source there. It's almost sunset now, so the cafe should be open for dinner. Ah, mysterious old man kidnapping village folk. Folk. Uh, now that's a rumor. <laughs> there we go. Chapter three. Missing. Oh, right. We complete that. So all of these have been sent to the Granny Riddleton. Okay. I mean we can go back to them anyway at the end of the series, so it's not a problem at all. Professor, it's getting dark outside. I'm afraid that's my cue to start closing up shop. Come by tomorrow if you get hungry. Okay then, so there was a cutscene there, which I actually did not know of, so... Um... The noise should be removed, but I'm not going to be putting the face cam in the cutscenes, just like... Cutting it down to that small screen, the bottom screen, yeah? Uh, anyway. Luke, let's take a moment to sum up our findings. We have a strange roaring tower, disappearing villagers, and an odd elderly kidnap kidnapper. It's also bizarre. I can't make any sense of it at all, Professor. I think we finally got some clues on our hands, my boy. <laughs> Observing ni the nightlife in this village might tell us more of what we need to know. Great idea, Professor. 
Night falls. It turns it's turned dark and Ramon still hasn't returned. Continue the investigation to find clues. Yes, let's save progress. Alright, let's talk to this woman girl here. I'm sorry, young lady. Could you help us? Could you help us? We're looking for someone, you see. And... Sorry, can't help you. And... But can't, I mean, don't want to. I barely even talked to Ramon, and I have no interest in this search. Hee 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 hee. But maybe if you help me solve this puzzle, I just might, you know, remember something. Tee hee. Right, I'm gonna end this episode, uh, now. And just who do you think you are, young lady? Right, uh, actually, just give me a second. Right, I'll try and finish this puzzle and then uh, I'm gonna end the episode there. So, the force of gravity on the moon is about one sixth of that on Earth. <sighs> this means that on the moon, an object weighs about one sixth of what it does on Earth. If you bring a, a 600 gram weight and a scale up to the moon and gently place the weight on the scale, which of the following weights will the scale indicate? A zero grams, B lighter than 100 grams, exactly 100 grams, or heavier than 100 grams. This is something I've actually kind of done in science. Just because it feels lighter, it doesn't mean that it is. So, it's not going to be 100 because it feels uh, one sixth of the weight of the thing, but the weight doesn't change. Well, actually. Yeah, it's in grams, so it's actually the mass. So it's actually going to be heavier than 100 grams, isn't it? That should do it. What? Ah, uh, I suppose I felt wrong. Think about what parts the scale is made up of. Okay, I tried to put logic behind it, and it didn't actually turn out properly at all. The force of gravity on the moon is about one sixth of that on Earth. This means that on the moon, an object weighs about one sixth of what it does on Earth. If you bring a 600 gram weight and a scale to the moon, gently place the weight on the scale, which the following weights will the scale indicate. It's gotta be the obvious answer then, isn't it? Probably. Nope, it's not the obvious answer, either. Let's try zero. Because if you gently place it, then... My answer. What? Ah. Frankly, I'm ashamed. So, it's the other one. Okay, we've gone through every single answer. Right. Explain. <laughs> that should do it. There we go. Another puzzle solved. That's just, that's right, the scale indicates weight of less than 100 grams. The scale is always set to zero, with the weight of the scale tray included. So when the same scale is brought to the moon, the tray weighs one sixth of what it did when the scale was set, and the scale will now indicate less than zero grams when nothing is in the tray. Ah, oh, that's why. It's stupid, isn't it? Oh well. Then again, if you think about it, with mass and stuff, mass doesn't change, its weight changes with the change of gravity. Gravitational, uh, the gravit, um, uh, speed of uh, acceleration of gravity, is it? Or acceleration due to gravity, which is less on the moon, so the weight would change, but the mass, which is measured in grams, would not. So, yeah. Tee hee hee! You know, I've heard that if you aren't careful walking around St. Mystery at night, you can run into trouble. I bet a moon wasn't being careful. What exactly do you mean? Uh You got a painting scrap, okay. And uh, Luna wait. Right. So I am actually going to end this episode here. So we have a few things in our journal first. Gizmos. And that's it, I think. So I'll just save quickly. And I'm going to end this episode here. So, thank you so much for watching this episode of 
uh, Professor Layton and the Curious Village. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot if you get more videos like this. So don't forget to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video. But until then, goodbye.